So this established uh, organ transplantation and it re has remained the gold standard for end-stage uh, organ failure. Now if we go a little bit into the history of uh, DCD, donation after circulatory death, which is also, which also referred to as non-heart beating donors, um, we know that the first transplant was uh, such, we just saw that. But then in 1968, there was an ad hoc committee, uh, Harvard Medical School, and they came up with a definition of brain death or permanent coma. And now we have a, a way of uh, procuring organs um, without the ischemic uh, event that happens at the time of DCD donation. And then that became the preferred way. And actually, for the most part, we all forgot about the the possibility of utilizing DCD uh, organs. And uh, the US Department of uh, Health and Human Services put out a report last year and it showed that there was 113,000 people in the US waiting on a transplant wait list. And we were only transplanting about 40,000 organs a year, um, leaving us with uh, far too many people still waiting and also dying on the wait list. Approximately 20 people die each day waiting for organ transplants. So given all of this, we know that um, the DCD donation is on the rise and people are realizing the potential and there's more and more DCD donors that are being worked up and families are putting forward more and more um, of their loved ones for DCD donation. Brain dead donation is leveled off a little bit but the, the bulk of the increase in uh, donation comes from DCD. Um, we do know that outcomes are largely similar now. We see it in trials and in, uh, in reports between brain dead and DCD. Uh, we do see an increase in utilization of devices such as intraortic balloon pump and ECMO post-transplant. Um, so there is room for optimization. Um, and there's also ongoing study needed to determine long-term We've seen up five-year reports, but not beyond. Um, it's also a unique setting for scientific innovation. And uh, when I look at your institution with uh, the capabilities, uh, I would think that this would be fertile ground for you to, uh, to investigate, both in situ and ex situ, uh, research on uh, DCD donation. And the new pathway of DCD has two arms, the direct procurement and then ex situ perfusion or heart in the box. And then the normothermic regional perfusion where you cannulate, you perfuse inside of the body uh, with the head vessels clamped off. This can increase our donor pool. Initially the thoughts were maybe around 30%, now it's like 50%. In our own experience, I'll show you a little bit later, we're around 55% uh, of DCD donors, so a significant increase. This can dramatically help with the shortage of organs and uh, decrease our waitlist times. And this was a report um, in 2022, um, just summarizing the worldwide uh, experience. And this was still early days, like UK had 79, um, Australia had 49. Uh, there was another report from the UK that added 36. The US total um, experience at that time was around 127. Um, there was reports from NYU with eight cases, Vanderbilt with 15. And at that stage, uh, UCSD, we've already performed 74, and we used uh, both of the systems. And you can see that the acceptance rate initially wasn't that high, but it's grown, and there's more and more um, graphs that are being accepted. Initially, the, and the early experience is fairly high uh, primary graft dysfunction rate, up as high as uh, 30%. Um, and uh, even 80% reported, but this has gradually decreased and we see now around 8%, which is not too different uh, than what we've seen in the past with brain dead donors. And the one year survival is excellent. And we've been doing this kind of work and uh, I think it's important that we have to maximize all donor organs and not just the DCD. That's a, actually a low hanging fruit, but you need to work on all of these. And you can see UCSD is an outlier um, acceptances with ejection fraction less than 60%, acceptances over 40 years of age, um, offers over number 50, um, offers further than 500 miles away. Um, so our program has been progressive and we do it as a combined uh, approach, um, both the surgery and the medicine group really reviewing 
and asking us why not? Why not use these organs? Um, can we do it? Is there potential in these organs? As opposed to just, uh, is, this, is this a good match? No, we, we really look at each donor in, in a lot of detail. We involve our immunology people, we involve our ID people um, into the selection process as well. We reported our, our transplant rate uh, and our effect on our waitlist time. And you can see that we have uh, had, we had a, um, since we started DCD, if we looked one year before, and then one year after doing DCD, we, we increased our transplant rate by 87%. So uh, we've dramatically reduced our wait list and increased our capacity for uh, taking patients onto our wait list and, and helping them out. So um, this is the transplant volume in the US and you can see there's this uptick. We saw when the opioid epidemic, uh, C donors lifted the bar up a little bit and now it's DCD that's lifting it and it's going to, I think, tilted even further up. You can see in the US uh, early experience still, I think these green bars is going to eventually fill up half of the, um, of the bar. Um, we're gonna do half of our transplants is gonna come from, uh, from DCD hearts. 